Previously on The Bill. We've got forensic evidence to prove that Paul Griffiths was at the scene of your father's attack. Yeah, I'm gay. And I'm not going to hide anymore. Pregnancy obviously suits you. You're pregnant? Why didn't you tell me? Sick. It's not in your husband! Something's happened to him! You're alright. You're alright, come on. Kathy! I've got something for you. The picture's a bit slushy, but it was the only one the shop had. It's lovely. Thank you. Look, Kath, I know it's none of my business, but the baby, is it Brendan's? Doesn't matter. I'm going to bring it up on my own. No, you're not on your own. Don't ever think like that. You've always got me. The superintendent wants special attention paid to the Jasmine Allen estate to keep your eyes open. Gary, aren't you supposed to be out with Greg? Had to go to CSU, Sarge. This woman threw herself at our car because her husband's gone missing. She's off her head, we worry. OK, well, I want to swap it around a bit. I want to pair you with Luke. So stay near the Jasmine Allen. Look, mate, um, well, I just want you to know that I don't have a problem with what you did yesterday. Yeah, it is, mate. Listen, you give us a minute, yeah? You all right? What? Well, now it's all out in the open. I just thought things could be a little bit better, you know? Better? Well, yeah, stop all the rumours. I thought that's what you wanted. Do you know what, Luke? Ever since I laid eyes on you, all you've ever given me is grief. I wish I'd never met you. Well, it's waiting. I just want to know how Charlie is. Yeah. I'm trying his mobile again. Well, look, Paul doesn't know we're here, so he'll get in touch. I can't believe Paul would attack my dad. Can you think of anywhere else he might have taken Charlie? No. Is this your Uncle Keith? The one who lives in Australia? He said your dad speaks to him a couple of times a year. Yeah. Got a telephone number for him? It should be in my dad's address book. I'll go have a look. Well, there isn't any need. Oh, it's... Right, give me something to do. Why do you want the uncle's number? I think it's worth looking into, look, don't you? I don't mean to give it the big I am here, but I have dealt with a lot of situations like this. Now, our main priority is to find Paul and the kid, and then we can go ringing relatives once it's under control, OK? You right, Kerry? How are you doing? Do you know what? Sometimes I wish Luke had done the dirty on me with another woman. Do you really think that would have made a difference? He's in the canteen, yeah? <coughs> the yeah. Sorry. <sighs> I'd love to be like her, wouldn't you? What do you mean, like a robot? Yeah, all that authority. I wonder what's rattled her cage. All right. I take it you haven't seen the paper this morning. You don't need me to tell you that a bad press isn't new to the police service. Indeed. But I want to know how you've let it get this far. We've had our fair share of problems with the Coal Lane estate. Mr Trent and his security company, Mortis, saw this and moved in. And he's managed to get the crime rate down? On paper, yes. Maybe we should seek his advice, then. We suspect he created some of the crime himself in the first place. That's the only reason it's gone down. Most of the Coal Lane residents think that Mortis are doing a great job. Unfortunately, they don't know the half of it. Tell me. There have been several suggestions that they employ strong arm tactics. There's also a strong racist overtone. I sent Kathy Bradford, one of our CSU officers, out with them yesterday. How did she find them? Professionalism itself. What do we know about Mortis? We've checked out their employees. Some of them have form for minor I'm offenses. more interested in Mr. Trent. Clean as a whistle. In other words, we don't know much, do we? He's sitting pretty and making us look like fools. We're working on it. That's just not good enough. I want to know what you're going to do about this. Hello, Ken. Or should that be George? I assume you've grasped me up for me in writing. I haven't, actually. I reckon we can sort this out between us. What? You stay inside Mortis. 
get all the information you can on Trent. And then I pass it on to you. Spot on. And then you take it to the super and you get much needed brownie points. You know what? You're not as stupid as you look. No, I'm not. You can stick it where the sun don't shine, all right. I don't think you've got much choice. Oh, yes, I have. I've quit, Mortis. It's over. Which means you'll have to wait an awful lot longer for the money I owe you. All right. Suit yourself. I can't find Uncle Keith's number. Dad must have it at the office. Oh, it's not important anyway. Right, stay calm, OK? And try and persuade him to meet you. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. There's not been any trouble now. Everything's fine. How's Charlie? And the neighbouring estates? There's been a rise in crime, the Jasmine Allen in particular. Right. I've increased patrols there. That still doesn't deal with mortis. And... I've called a residence meeting there tonight to talk to them about the problems they're having. Isn't that a case of closing the stable door after the horse has belted? I wouldn't be surprised if Mortis are lined up to offer security of the Jasmine Allen. Well, that would be a disaster. Which is why I'm going there tonight. Reassure the residents, convince them they don't need to hire security. It's not a bad idea. Let's hope it works. Get the press to come along. Won't make the front page. Show Mortis that we're not going to lie down and let them walk all over us. I'll let you know how it goes. No need. I'll be there. We want to show we care. What better way than for the borough commander to take time from her busy schedule to attend? Come on. That's it. We move away from him. What's going on? Back up! Please, you set me up! You don't know what you're doing! Yeah? Ah! Ah! Oh, Griffiths, I'm arresting you for assault! It's not right, is all I'm saying. Yeah, but you can't choose your own sexuality, Kathy. Yeah, but you don't have to rub people's noses in it like Luke does. Anyway, don't surprise me. What? You knew he was gay. You only have to look at him to see he's more into Arthur than Martha. Yeah. Yeah, it's Kerry I feel sorry for. Well, there's no need. Oh, we were just saying how awful it must be for you. How are you bearing up? I'm fine. Yeah, well, we're all thinking of you. If I get one more pitying look off anyone, I am going to explode. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Commander. May I introduce myself? My name is Roberta Cry. I'm the front desk officer here. Well, might not be for much longer. I'm even thinking of uh, applying to the police the next time you meet me. I might be on the fourth. Never know. If only we hadn't done away with the height restriction. Oh. She looks happy. There's a big piece in the paper, isn't there? Slagging us off about the mess on the coal lake. She's probably here to have a word with the super. Well, that's all we need, isn't it? Fitzwilliam breathing down our next. Yeah? Sir? Sorry to bother you, Gov, but this is really hard for me. What is it, Phil? I wouldn't normally do something like this, but given the circumstances, I thought you should know. Well, spit it out. Ken Drummond. What about him? He's been moonlighting. You sure about this? It's on Dan Cole Lane. He's been working part-time as a security guard. For Mortis. Must have killed you telling us this. You realise the implications for Ken? We'll have to get rid of him. No, not necessarily. I'm sorry? I know what Ken's done isn't right, sir, but we could use it to our advantage. How? Because if we keep him in there, we can find out exactly what Mortis are up to. Look, I know it's not exactly going strictly by the book. Not too right, it isn't. It goes against everything. Yeah, but this is our chance of getting one up on Mortis. We're not doing it. Why? For starters, you just got Ken Drummond suspended with immediate effect. And apart from that, you don't listen to a word I say, do you? I'm trying to help. You're still playing the maverick cop, aren't you? What do you know about this guy, Trent? He's got some dodgy business called Mortis. We don't know whether it's dangerous, we don't know anything about it. Yet you want to put Ken back in there. But it's our only way of getting into Mortis. Oh, shut up, Phil. You're not doing this for the station. You're doing it for yourself. I gave you a roasting the other day because you got some bad results. So you've decided to get a colleague into trouble to score yourself some brownie points. That's not true. 
You don't know whether you're telling the truth yourself anymore. Get out of my sight. Even I didn't think you could stoop this low. Nice work. You know, I still think Keith Horn's got a bigger part to play in all this. We are still not going on about the uncle. Look, something's not right. Juliet, it is really good that you're seeing the bigger picture here. But Lindsay has got her son back. We've got the man who attacked her father. And once we've spoken to Griffiths, we can file this under F. F? Finished. Ken. Gov. I need to speak to you. We don't just have five. I'm trying to sort this out. No, now. Super's waiting. He's in bother again. Has this got anything to do with you, Sarge? Of course not. Anything the matter, Gov? You could say that. No wonder you've been falling asleep at your desk. You've been a busy boy, haven't you? At least that's what we've been hearing. I was defending myself. Cliff Hollands, a middle-aged man. You're a nightclub bouncer. I love my son. Very heartwarming. Lindsay was run off the road, yeah? Was it you? Of course not. Do you know who did it, then? Go speak to Freddie Jordan. Mr. Griffiths, stop mucking us about. New block of flats being built by Fawcett Gardens. It's all is. That's next to Cliff's strip of land, isn't it? Yeah. Jordan needs it as an entrance to the apartments. He's offered Cliff well over the asking price, but he's refusing to budge. So where do you fit in? Jordan told me to go put the frighteners on Cliff. You mean threaten him? Yeah. I tried to reason with him. I told him it was only a piece of land and that Jordan wouldn't stop till he got it, but he would have none of it. So you use violence? If Jordan don't get this land, he won't be able to complete the apartment block. He stands to lose hundreds of thousands. He'll do anything to get it. Such as? He ran Lindsay and Charlie off the road. And that's why you took Charlie? For his own safety? I warned Cliff. I couldn't believe he was putting the safety of his daughter and his grandson in jeopardy for a stupid bit of land. So I lost it and I punched him. He were only a dick, but he stumbled and fell. He'll tell you himself when he comes round. If he comes round. Can I ask one question? Phil told you, didn't he? I'm not blaming him. It's my mess. I knew this would happen if I was found out. Maybe not. So, ordinarily you'd be suspended and then face a disciplinary panel. But what we want you to do is go back to Trent. Go back? That's right. Ingratiate yourself with him. Get him to trust you. Find out exactly what Mortis are up to. They're running rings around us. But I resigned yesterday. Well, you just have to unresign him, won't you? Well, what do I say to him? That's your decision. Making things up seems to be second nature to you. Sir. And not a word to anybody, especially Phil. As far as the station are concerned, you've been suspended for bringing the Met into disrepute. Jules. Australia House on the line. Oh, thanks. Got it? Yep, cheers. Hello. Everything all right, mate? No, not really. I've just been suspended. What for? I was working as a security guard and we found out. I had to find out. Watch your back. That's all I'm saying. Poor bloke. He only in the risks. What's up with Ken? Apparently he's been suspended for working on the side. Go. Me and Ken were working on the credit card cloning. Uh, it's getting big. I'm going to need some help. Well, you'll have to find somebody else. Well, everyone else was really busy. Ken knew the history. and he Tough. Had... OK, what about... Kathy Bradford, she was pretty keen last time she was here. I could see if CSU can spare her up. OK. OK. Do you really think that's a good idea? Asking Kathy Bradford for help? What have you got against Kathy? He said he wouldn't be long. Well, what time was this, Petra? <sighs> it was before 8 o'clock because Corrie was still on. I was that engrossed in the programme, I didn't even look up. Uh, what pub did Ronnie say he was going to? The speckled hen, it's only down the road. He asked if I wanted some chips bringing in. 
And that was the last thing he said. And you really can't remember what he was wearing? Like I said, I was watching the telly. I thought something was wrong about half eleven when he hadn't come back. And then I thought, well, maybe he's got talking to somebody or something. And well, I was in bed anyway and I must have fell asleep. And then when I woke up about six this morning and realised he hadn't come home. But why did you wait till eight o'clock to report him missing? Well, I was trying to calm myself down. I was, I was trying to think of rational explanations as to why he hadn't come home. But there aren't any, are there? Could I need the names and addresses of his friends. Maybe he stayed the night at one of theirs. No, not without ringing me, he wouldn't. He knows how much I worry. Well, have you found his work? He might have turned up this morning. No, he's an accountant. He works from home. Something's happened to him. I know it has. He hasn't been missing 24 hours yet. But he knows I'm a worrier. I can only think that he's had an accident or he's been held against his will or Look, something. Thinking like that, it's no good to no one. Have you got any family who could come round and sit with you? No. We only moved here from Liverpool about six months ago. That's him. We went to Benidorm for our first wedding anniversary. Well, look, if she does behave a little bit freaky sometimes, she's got good reason, don't you think? Yeah, but I can't understand anybody acting the way she does. Oh, don't be nasty. Robbie, you know, she's seen some serious stuff in her life, you know? Well, like what? You know she was in Hong Kong. Did you know she was married when she was there? Married? Exactly. And she don't talk about it, so she won't tell you. She won't tell you that her husband was killed in a car crash on their honeymoon. Yeah. So, play nice, eh? We'll be in touch as soon as we know anything. Thanks. Please find him. I bet Ronnie's having an affair or something. Probably, and she knows it. She's telling a pack of lies. What? Held against his will? She's making it all up. Well, how do you know? I just do. Thank you, Mr. Jones. What did he say? Nothing. He denied everything. Could be lying. Yeah, we've got no proof of that, though, have we? Look, I know you think Paul Griffiths is telling the truth, but we've only got his word for it, haven't we? And let's face it, he obviously lied through his teeth to get off the GBH charge. But what about Jordan? No, I've just spoken to him. Nothing's come of that, so nothing else to pursue. Well, you know what? I think there is. All right. Use your instincts. Keep looking into it. Thanks, Sarge. You heard about Ken? Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Must be in real financial straits to do something so stupid. Holly, could I have a word with you this time? Listen, um, Kathy, we're going to be short in CID now, right? Um, I was talking to the DCI and I suggested you might be able to help out again. If you haven't got too much on in CSU. I'd love to. You'll have to clear it with Jim. No, I'll be fine. Great. All right. Well, I'm, I'll tell the soon. Hey, Brendan. Come in. Kathy. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a strange question. No, she's never been married. Are you sure, Paul? Yeah, I'm sure. I think I'd know if she'd been married. Come on, I haven't seen you for ages. And besides, I want to say thank you for putting me forward to the DCI. Drinks are on me. That sounds lovely, Kathy. but it's, it's short notice for my mum to look after the kids. Oh, I'm sure your mum might. Right. All right. All right, sounds good. I'll ask if anyone else fancies coming. Uh, no, actually, I was, I was just thinking about the two of us. All right, great. Yeah, give you the opportunity to let your hair down without the kids. Good, because uh, yeah, I fancied having a bit of a heart to heart with you. Brandon? Oh, sorry, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, it's fine. Um, can I ask you a favour? Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah. Paul, you never guess what. Brandon has just asked me out for a drink on her own. Yeah, I think he wants to make a go of things. Mmm. The thing is, I, I wanted to explain why I didn't want any publicity yesterday. Um, the thing is, I'm a copper. See ideas on Hill. Uh, I've been moonlighting. My name's not George, it's Ken. Ken Drummond. Well, to be honest, wondering why you didn't want your mug in the local room didn't keep me awake last night. But thanks for telling me. Well, before the fire, uh, I had a close call with my boss, D. 
D.S. McAllister. She lives at Montague Heights. And when you wanted to splash my face all over the papers, it was getting too close for comfort, you know. The thing is, I'm skinned. I've got this situation. Two families to support. Debts like you wouldn't believe. And people I owe money to chasing my tail. And... Me and coppers don't mix. But thanks for your honesty. Well, that's not the only reason I'm here. Go on. I think I can help you. Relationships change, Paul, and in this case, for the better. You haven't been married. Why'd you ask? Well, Robbie seems to think you have. I don't know what she's talking about. I'll ask her where she got that from. No, 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 don't bother. Uh, you know what a gossip she is, anyway. I don't think she's on there. Well, there's the straight and narrow, and then there's my way. Which is? Do you mind if I? Well, let's just say I get to the same destination as everyone else. I just use a different route. You know what I'm saying? Not really. One of your guys talks Jimmy Gardner's, didn't he? That's a very serious allegation. Well, I'm supposed to be investigating it right now. The file's on my desk as we speak. If I didn't know better, Ken, I might think you were threatening me. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's not my style. I'm here to do you a favour. Go on. Well, like I say, I've got all these debts and uh, you scratch my back. Catch my drift. The fire at Jimmy Gardner's. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, but one of your guys do. And I'm sure you don't want CID crawling all over the place. So, what do you reckon? What makes you think I should trust you? The Jasmine Allen estate. The police are doing a pep talk with the residents here tonight. Posters everywhere. Yeah, but did you know that Sunhill's finest are going to be there? Superintendent Acaro, the borough commander. Why are you telling me this? Well, I happen to know that you're after the security on the Jasmine Allen. I also happen to know that Superintendent Acaro is planning to block it. <laughs> is he indeed? How are you getting on with Debbie? Debbie? She's, um,. Very rigid. Well, that's one way of describing her. You keep her eye out for her, right? Because she's out for herself, that one. I could so just be going off on one here. Debbie seems to think so. Yeah, well, Debbie's motto is if you don't agree with her, then you're wrong. There's definitely something dodgy going on. I mean, this uncle emigrates to Australia, and no one except Cliff ever hears from him again. And you think the answer's here? It's a strip of land. Cliff does this all the time, holds a developer to ransom until he has to agree to his price. So what's different about this one? Oh, Grandma, can I check this out? Oh, that is totally welded together. Well, this could be anything, it would be a drain or... What are you thinking? We need to get it open. I'm going to be helping out in CID. Come. Well, Brandon's suggestion. With Ken suspended, they need an extra hand. I reckon it's got more to do with being close to me, though. Do you think you and Brandon might get together? I mean, I mean it would be nice with a baby and everything. Uh, I don't know. Watch this space. Anyway, Jack Meadows thinks it's a great idea. Really? Yeah. He thinks I've got a star detective written all over me. Uh, look, you've forgotten this again. What am I going to do with you, eh? You should get that insured. No, no need. It's only a token. Don't give out rocks like that as tokens. Oh, Kathy, don't start that again. I've told you, me and Owen are just mates. We'll get it valued then. Take it to the jewellers. Just leave it. Or if you ask me, Owen's after more than friendship. Kathy, you don't know what you're talking about. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, I think I've upset her. Oh, don't beat yourself up. She's pregnant. And the hormones will be all over the place. Oscar. Saving. Indecent assault in male toilets, Candy Park. Can you deal? Received. 
be less interested in what I'm doing now. Sarah Oscar from 202. Actually, I'm a bit tied up, but I've just seen 21 pass by heading in that direction. Are they able to deal? You know why they got us doing this, didn't you? Is this the way it's going to be from now on? Anything that's remotely gay, get the resident expert to investigate. It's just a misunderstanding. Oh, no. well, tell me. When that fellow over there reckons I was coming on to him, must be something wrong with him. Well, why would he say that? Don't ask me, he must be warped. I'm married, mate. Mr. Lucas. Grant. Mr. Granger says that you made advances to him in the bug. Tyler. I've told your mate here. I don't know what he's talking about. That eye looks nasty. It's fine. So you're denying the accusation? Too right. Well, misunderstanding or not, Mr. Lucas, Mr. Granger just can't go around hitting people, can he? The one you come to the station gives a statement. No, I ain't gonna bother. So you're just gonna let him get away with it? Sir, these uh, targets are well known for cottaging. Well, I didn't know that. I only came in here because I was busting. I've got a wife, two daughters. I'm going to leave it. He's lying, isn't it? Who knows? Who cares? You all right? Yeah. Well, why shouldn't I be? Your husband turned up. No, I was hoping you might have some news. Oh, nothing. Not yet. Oh, something has happened to him. I can feel it in me bones. I'm just on my way to some Hughes. You two might want to come. You know, that woman that reported her husband missing? The body of a man in his 30s, just been pulled out of the Thames. Ronnie? No. No, not Ronnie. We went to the lab at Brandon. There's an old underground tank there. It looks like it's been sealed up. This is nonsense, Gov. No one has reported Keith Holland's missing. Well, we could just be wasting everyone's time. Like, I wouldn't have come to you if I wasn't sure. I spoke to Australia House, and according to them, Keith Holland never actually arrived there. So he changed his mind. He went somewhere else. But it is intriguing why Cliff won't sell that strip of land. You give me permission to open it up? Yeah. Yes. Debbie, your baby miner just called. Oh, I'll call her later. Well, she said Andrew's got a bit of a temperature. You need to go back and check him. She's always panicking. Let's get rid of her. Mother of the year. Not. It's not the one we're looking for. You're right. What do you mean? Well, Debbie said your hormones will be all over the place. I'm oh, fine. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl yet, or are you keeping that surprise? Don't get upset, Gav. I ain't seen you like this. I'm gonna lay into that Brandon when I see him. Leave it. Well, he's the father of the baby. There is no baby. I don't understand. I lost it. Last night? No, when I was on leave. I didn't want to tell anyone. I found it hard to accept. Oh, what happened? Well, I started bleeding one day. Nothing they could do, the baby was gone. Kathy, have you had a miscarriage? Yeah, and she's kept it all to herself. Oh, that is the worst thing you can do. Look what happened to me. You've got to talk about it. Oh, come here. God, the sergeant's gonna have a field day if I get this wrong. You're letting Debbie get to it. Don't. DCI's not gonna be too impressed either. But you think something's not right, so you're checking it out. That's your job. You trust your instinct, Jules. Thank you. Well done, Jules. Anything? You were bang on. They found some bones. Are you mad or just blind? Well, 
so sorry. Oh, you weren't looking where you were going. Well, I'll pay for any damage. Maybe we should uh, swap details, Miss... McAllister. Debbie. Michael. Michael Ballantyne. I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want any fuss. How many months gone were you? Three and a half. Who was the father? Was it Brendan? Yeah. Did you tell him you were pregnant? Wasn't thrilled. Men are such pigs. He thought it best if we get rid of it. Yeah, you offered to help him when Tanya died. Yeah, well, it can't have been easy for him to find out his wife was, was a dyke. But deep down, I was in love with him. I know that now. Would you have brought up the baby on your own? Of course. I was looking forward to sharing my life with someone. Having someone to love. Oh, Kathy, you've got to stay strong. I know I'm trying, but I'm worn out. You know, nothing ever goes right for me. I go home, go home to an empty house, no one to ask how my day's gone. No one to love me. Oh, don't say that. You know, sometimes I think I should just... just end it all. Get out of people's hair. Sweet Lindsay. So do you see Becca? What is she doing here? I went and had a look at Cliff's land. No, 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 I told we you. We found not... a body. Well, the remains of one anyway. Well, has it been identified yet? No, we're still waiting. But I'm pretty sure that we found Keith Holland. Good work. Thanks. Look, do you want to come in on this? I'm going to go and have a chat with her now. No, I've got things to do. You carry on. Look, do you want a coffee? No, I'm fine. Look, I'm sure there must be some mistake. His dad wouldn't kill anyone, let alone his own brother. Did he have a good relationship with your Uncle Keith then? Yeah, of course. We all got on really well. Sunday dinners. Days out. And you never noticed any friction between them? No. Well, they did have a bit of a row after Mum died. I don't really know what that was about. I, I think it was probably just stress. Dad was grieving. We all were. I thought that was why Uncle Keith left. But we know you didn't leave, Lindsay. Do you think this could have had something to do with Mum? It's possible, but... I'm, I really don't know. Just so confused. <laughs> Just want my dad to wake up. <laughs> Tell me it's not true. Things will get better, you know. Yeah, this is what we like at the moment. Kathy, we've got to do the paperwork. On... Hey, what's up? Nothing. She's lost the baby. What? What baby? What baby? It's fair you're quite relieved. Look, can you just leave us, please? What do you mean? Well, at least now you won't have to play absent father to your unwanted child, Brendan. You're right. No, you've seen a doctor. Yeah, I'm fine. I would have supported you, you know. You would have done that. Of course. I owe you for all the support you gave me when Tanya died. I'm really sorry. What? Petra's phoned. She's been broken into. Can't it wait? No, we've got to get over there straight away. Just go. We'll talk later. I'm around all afternoon. Yeah, I'll see you later, yeah?
P.C. Ashton. The bloke from before. From the toilets. Yeah, what about him? I want you to go and talk to him again. Why? He's been badly beaten up. Yeah, well, can't you give that to CSU? Have you got a problem? Now I'm the resident puff, do I get everything gay related? If you take that chip off your shoulder for just one second, I'm asking you to do this because I think you're better qualified. If you talk to Grant Lucas on a one-to-one, -one, then maybe he'll agree to give a statement, OK? Good. Now get on and do it. There's no sign of forced entry. Exactly. Whoever did it has used a key. Ronnie's. We don't know that. Well, he's probably been mugged and they've stolen his keys. We've rung around all the hospitals and there's no one being admitted that fits your husband's description. He's probably lying in a ditch somewhere. I can't even think about it. Have you got another photo we could borrow? Of Ronnie? Hmm. This one? Yeah, great. Mm. Look, um, about dinner? No, I, I can't. I'm, um, I've got a baby. A son. And I, I don't think I could get a, a babysitter at such short notice. Andrew. Well, I suppose we could, but I'm <laughs> not very good at cooking. I'm great. Yeah, my place it is then. <laughs> yeah, do you want me to make some wine? Red or white? That sounds good. Yeah, don't worry, I know where you live. See you soon. What's going on? You playing some sort of kickoff? Good say that, Kenny boy. I'm seeing your boss. This is a waste of time. Put your mind at rest. Go on, get in there. I'll wait here. Good. Hmm? <clears throat> uh, good evening. Nice to see you. No, 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 that's quite wrong. We're not here to talk about Coal Lane or what happened there. Tonight, we're talking to the people of Jasmine Allen Estate, working... working with them to crack down on crime in the area. the only thing I was right about. I had Petra's fingerprints checked from the photo she gave us. And? Like I said, she's a liar. She's got form for this in Liverpool. She skipped bail on a deception charge and her husband. Well, he doesn't exist. I can't believe he's so valuable. Yeah, and it was his first wife's. Looks like he wants you to be his second. Done. Not my words. But we wanted to sleep with you next time. I feel quite sorry for her. Save your sympathy for someone who needs it. It's all right, Ronnie's come home. Petra McAvoy, I'm arresting you for failure to answer bail. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, something you're later relying on in court. I don't know why you've come here. I'm not going to give a statement. Don't you think you owe it to yourself? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. That's twice you've been attacked in those toilets today. We're on a bad luck, that's all. Listen, I'm not only talking to you as a copper, I'm speaking to you as a gay man. Is you okay? And unless you give us a statement, what happened today is going to carry on happening. <sighs> Look, mate, I'm married. She's due to drop another any minute. I was married too. I couldn't come to terms with my sexuality. So I hid from it. Almost ruined my life. And someone else's. Someone who I care a lot about. I know how hard it is. But sooner or later you've got to come to terms with who you are. I'm not are. gay. Yeah, that's what I used to say. I've got a wife and a kitty on the way. 
What happened today was a mistake. Now leave me alone. I feel really guilty about this. I don't. You shouldn't have had to um, dealt with this on your own, though. Look, let's start afresh. Clean slate. Let's not go for a drink tonight. Let's um, get a bottle and go to mine. No, let's not. Well, whatever you want. Look, um, I think we should see less of each other. I'm gonna get the DCI to find me someone else to work with. No. It's cool. <laughs> Kathy, I don't want to go out with you. All right, there are hundreds of guys who would love to. I, I just don't feel that way about you. No. I'm sorry. I think that's a very good point you've made, sir. Of course, we're aware of the rise in burglaries here, and we're determined to catch those responsible. Is he asleep? For how long? Is anyone's guess. So, uh, Mr. McAllister? There isn't one. You don't want to talk about it? Not really. He's dead. I'm sorry. Can't be easy bringing up a baby on your own. No, it's not. But I get by. Enough about me. What do you do? I'm a businessman. Oh, well, that could mean anything. Well, I run my own company. Import, export, that kind of thing. See, I knew it bore you. <sighs> it's been a long day. Well, sit down. Take the weight off your feet. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed we've increased patrols in the area. In addition, we're also implementing a number of other measures to prevent these crimes being committed in the first place. Urgent assistant needed. Jasmine Allen. Firearms involved. How'd you get on? No good. He was adamant he didn't want to make a complaint. Can't say we didn't try. Listen, you know when that call first came through? What, Granger's allegation? Yeah. Was it given to me because of... Well, you know. No. Are you sure about that? I just said so, didn't I? Yeah, well, I don't believe you. And I don't think I like your tone. Yeah, well, I don't care. Not that it's any of your concern, but it was Kerry's idea. Yeah, well, Kerry wouldn't do that. Yeah, right. Well, then she's obviously still bothered about me, isn't she? That's why she's doing things like this, so she can get me back. I don't think so. What? Nothing, just forget about it. No. Listen, I have had it up to here with you. What is your problem with me? Do I really have to tell you? I thought as much. You can't handle the fact that I'm gay, can you? You're having a laugh. You see, it's you that can't handle your sexuality. Yesterday, when you got up in the canteen and announced to everyone that you were gay, I thought that was probably the bravest thing I've ever seen you do. But now look at you. You're back to normal like a whinging old woman. You think the old world revolves around you, well, it don't. Believe me, Kerry's well over you, mate. What do you mean? What do you mean she's over me? Where's Brendan taking you tonight then? The council do. Petra McAvoy. What the hell is going on? He still thinks you're pining after him. <laughs> you're right, Harry. Look, it's no loss, okay? Like, my between-the-sheets experiences with you weren't exactly anything to write home about. Actually, you know, it's been nice to have the chance to be with a real man for a change. 
What are you talking about? Come on, Luke, you're a copper. You can work it out. I'm over you. I've had sex. With him. And it was great. I'm really sorry. Look, I know you're angry with me for wasting your time and everything. I don't know why I did it. Am I going to have to spend the night in here? Do you think I'll get sent to prison? If it was up to me, I'd lock you up and throw away the key. Why? Because you're sick in the head, making up stories about your non-existent husband. I'm lonely! People like you don't deserve friends. Oh! I'll get you for this! Oh! Who do you think they're gonna believe? A police constable? Or a twisted little freak who's got a history of making up stories? I dare he was involved with guns. You don't seem to know very much, Adam. It's the Deputy Assistant Commissioner. He's going to be delighted with this. See, I've got a mate. He knows someone who works at Sunhill. It's called uh, Ken. Ken something. Drummond. Yeah, that's it. Do you know him? Of course I do. He works for me. Or at least he did. He was suspended today. Apparently, he was moonlighting. Actually, I heard a little whisper about him. Well, no, actually, it's none of my business. So. Yeah, go on. Well, this mate of mine reckons that Ken's bent. He's on the take. But Trent, trust me. Look, give me one more day, OK? I'll find out what's going on tonight from him, and then we've got him. It'll be fine. I've reeled him in. Hook, line and sinker. Hmm. He's as straight as a die. Some people aren't as straight as they look. Get in. There he is. I'll bet my life on it. Next time on The Bill. I'll ask you again, what are you doing here? I know who you are. Alan Trent. Shelly! Shelly! Spencer, come on. Shelly! Watch the key, watch the keys. 